Here we are guys, the latest edition of the Santos Sway. Um, this week I'm trying to do something a little more different. I'm going to dip into the player role of the Metzala and look a little bit more detail into our player Lucas Lorenzo at Santos. So first and foremost, the Metzala. There's often much debate and at times confusion surrounding the function of the Metzala but the role is much simpler than it lets on. And when put into practice correctly, it can be one of the um, most important tools in your managerial kit bag on FM21. This term mezzala often originated from a combination of two words, meza and ala, which when translated means half winger and can be best compared to a traditional number eight uh, as part of a midfield three. Uh, the player who contributes most to frequently with attacking moves, exploits the half space and arrives in the box with real zest. I'd say if you think of a, a, a more attacking minded box to box midfielder, you, you, you'll you basically get your kind of your Metzala. But we're going to look in, into that role in a little bit more deeper. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy the ride. So moving into the wonderful world of FM, what we've got here first and foremost is our subject itself, Lucas Lorenzo. Um, you can see firstly, if we're just looking purely at his attributes, um, Lorenzo itself, he's, he's a fast attacking midfielder. Um, he's got acceleration of 14, He's gifted with good technique, again at 14, extraordinary dribbling skills, 14, um, which he can utilize you know, in tight spaces. And he's got good peripheral, peripheral vision of the game. Um, his vision is also at 14. He's pretty elegant in terms of his movements off the ball with a 13 attribute rating. Um, he plays with his head held high. He knows how to distribute the game well, which is reflected in his passing score of 16. Um, and he, he, he often can be found also dropping quite deep, which we're going to look at a little bit later on. Um, probably if I was going to say, has Lorenzo got any weaknesses? Um, it would be more of his physical attributes, um, particularly drawing upon his strength of eight and his very slight figure. He, you know, he's only five foot five. So he's not going to be winning a lot of your aerial duels, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to be able to operate um, in a, in a defensive transition um, because he's got good acceleration, he's got good work rate off the ball. Um, so he probably could operate, at, you know, he's gonna pick up some interceptions um, during, during his um, during press. So I'm just gonna dip into um, the tactics itself. And let me just put Jobson up here at the moment. please. Um, if we were going to have a Metzala operating in-game, we'll just quickly read through what the Metzala says. So it says, this is the modern interpretation of a Metzala. A central player likes to drift wide and operate in the half spaces. The Metzala is essentially a central half winger who likes to do his defending slightly further up the field, although he generally does have less of a defensive responsibility. Whilst on support duty, the Metzala will seek to balance his responsibilities between the more traditional midfielder and an inclination towards contributing to the attacking third. With the attack duty set up, um, he will often leave his midfield responsibilities to his teammates, whilst mainly looking to make attacking contributions in the final third. Now, if we just look how I've got Lorenzo set up, you'll, Lorenzo, you'll see that yeah, I've got him as a central midfielder on support. Um, however, if we look at the player instructions, I've got gets further forward. Um, so he likes to, to, to make an impact in, in the final third of the game, making more advanced runs. I've got the roam from positions um, and take more risks. The, the, so those are three kind of player instructions that you'll find associated with the Metzala. Um, 
So you can see, although I've got him playing as a central midfielder on support, I've kind of already pinched some of those Metsala player instructions um, to be able to, 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 to pull across into the game. Um, if we just jump into solve for score, um, and you'll see that in terms of, obviously we don't want that heat map. In terms of his uh, performances this season um, in the state championship in Brazil, uh, you'll see kind of from this heat map um, that the midfielder is starting to really mainly operate within the middle third of the pitch. Um, he's covering significant amount of space um, across across the field. Um, however, the heat map highlights his, his, his kind of positional play. Um, the Santos man is favoring the left-hand side vertical channel or the left-hand sided half space. And it's from this position that Lucas is uh, in his element. He's got the capacity to find pockets of space, to receive the ball, and then from within this posi position to be able to play incisive through passes to help to progress the ball up the field or you know to be able to open up the defense and create a, a keep a clear cut chance um just going to slide you into the tactical board i'm going to attempt to show you how um, operating in the half space can provide an attacker with an advantage um, first and foremost if we just take down the the, the field of view so obviously I've split the, the pitch into five vertical lanes and you've got the, the wings, the, the central column and then the two half spaces. So for this example, should probably use one versus one, one against one. Okay, so let's pretend that my attacker is on the ball. Um, and we're just taking in, into consideration fields of view. So in this central position, um, with both teams standing in front of goal. The fields of view that both players have are vertical. Um, however, if you were gonna move a player into the half space, his field of view, obviously you're always gonna be looking towards goal. His field of view is, um, it's, not, it's not vertical anymore because that's a vertical line. It, it, it's more, it's diagonal. Um, so a player in the half space, uh, has, has, has got more options than a central player because he doesn't have to turn away from, from the center space. Uh, he doesn't have to turn his head away from that central column uh, to play to side to side. Um, he, can, he can continue to face goal, um, which improves his passing game. It means that you're not going to be potentially be blindsided by a, a defender. You know, if you, any chance, any time you've got to play with your head on the swivel, there's a, there's an opportunity that what you see in front of you, that field of vision may change, the picture may change, and it could lead you to either A, um, playing an incomplete pass, or B, um, like I said, getting blindsided, getting interception, um, or, or being tackled. Um, in terms of actual the, the pass itself, if we put a defensive unit up here, so you can see uh, a diagonal pass uh, causes the opponent to make a bit more uh, of a more complex movement than, than a horizontal or vertical pass. So let's just pretend you're a defender and you're defending a straight pass. So if that's the case, if you're a defender and you're set in position, we're thinking about the cognitive response that you need to do. You, you really have just got to adjust your position on a, on a, on a lateral axis or your height. So you're either going to be making a, an aerial duel or a ground duel and you get your positioning right. If that ball is going to be played on a diagonal, then this defensive unit has to move um, either forwards, backwards, side to side, and make the decision as to whether that's going to be a, an aerial ball or um, a, a ground ball. So the opponent's got to adjust both their direction and their height, not just one or the other. So in most cases, this requires the opposition players to behave somewhat asymmetrically. Um, the individual defenders within the group move slightly differently. So if one moves slightly differently to the other and there's a bit of a lag, then there's going to be a gap. So it aids that that ball can then be played down a channel uh, and in through to a clear cut chance. Um, so that in itself is me looking at the 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 tactical board and in terms of our tactic at Santos we play with 
So we play with a centre forward or as an attacking forward. We've got a winger, it's Marino as the winger, and we've got Soteldo as an inside forward. So they would line up like this. And then you've had the Metzala would be entering into this half space. Now, what this would do is it is created an overload already. You can see we've got a two against one. So the Metzala also creates overloads within this half space. And I, I find it works really well if you're playing up with like an inverted winger and inside forward. Because what will happen is this defender has to make a decision. He's going to either have to buy it and try and put a challenge in on the Metzala, who's in, encountered the half space, leaving the ability to him to play a ball either side of that defender into space or if if the defender chooses just to stick and hold position well the Metzala can use his dribbling ability to bring that ball further up the field before then potentially taking a long shot or then playing the pass down the channel so that in a nutshell is how tactically the Metzala is used as an advantage within the game and um, what we're going to do now is I've, I've kind of picked three clips of the Lucas Lorenzo and what we're going to do is we're just going to look through those clips uh, and it's some good examples or I think they're good examples of him operating within that Metzala role. Bear with me two seconds and we'll get going. So, our first clip we've got is going to be coming up, where are you, here we go, so hopefully you should all be able to see this. So in this first clip, um, you'll see that Lorenzo drops in deep to receive uh, the ball, so there's, like I said earlier, there's times where the Santos defensive players have struggled to find a vertical pass. It's here where Lorenzo shows his tactical intelligence. Uh, the Brazilian can often be found dropping deep and collecting the ball, using his individual quality to receive passes between the block and using his dribbling ability um, to break, which places pressure on the opposition um, opposition back line. It's also from here that you can, you know, the Metzala will look to utilize his vision and technique to play the ball down the channel, like he has done in this, in this example. Um, the next example that we have, he says, is here. Um, so within this little clip, you can see Lorenzo has just received the ball and, and done a one-two in tight space. So it kind of exemplifies um, attributes such as first touch and balance. Uh, it's clear to see within this clip that he's receiving the ball in a congested area and playing a one-two. So that definitely is a trait which you might want to look uh, to within the game to be able to, to, to train up your Metzala to play the one twos. Um, and the final clip, you've just briefly seen that Lorenzo has been highlighted again. Um, but this one really shows the midfielder's ability off the ball. So it's documenting the importance of having high acceleration as well. And that acceleration has enabled Lucas to be able to quickly play that pass and accelerate away from his marker um, into space uh, before laying off the final pass. So. Just a few clips which I've managed to dig up off the old internet uh, in terms of Lorenko himself. Um, and we're just going to quickly jump back into FM again here. So in terms of Lorenko himself, obviously he's only 20 years old. He's very young still. He's got time to develop. He's got potential five-star ability um, within game. So I'm expecting big things from the young man. Um, and if we just look at the... Uh, the, we're just going to compare a comparison with him with um, Sanchez, who is the kind of player that we've got at the moment, Carlos Sanchez, who is the Metzala. But obviously at the age of 36, uh, his time's running out, shall we say. Um, so you can see they both got similar sort of player radars. Um, actually, Lorenzo is quicker. He's got better vision, similar sort of attacking um, score. He's got better technique. Uh, and believe it or not, he's, he's also better in the air. Probably those old legs don't want to get up in, in terms of Sanchez. So you, he's got, you know, all the attributes that you would expect. Um, he's, he's actually in a better place than, than our current uh, Metzala to be able to perform within that role. But if we just look at the, the attributes, um, 
obviously the key attributes to being a, 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 the Metzala. We've got dribbling, especially if they're going to be on attack QT. So it's a 14 plays 10. Uh, passing, 16 plays 14. Um, technique, 15 plays 14. So we're there, thereabouts. Off the ball movement, of course, is another big one. So it's 15 against 13. Uh, vision. 15 14 and acceleration 14 14 so if we're just looking at those primary um attributes lorenzo is definitely he's in good stead he's in good stead uh, so we're kind of hoping that as as he develops over the years he's going to become the the, the great metzala for, for our team and if we just finally just look into how lorenzo has been playing to date we look at his uh is it in that, the analysis? Look at the report. So, in terms of average playmaker within the league um, in Syria, advanced playmaker, you can't actually drill down in terms of Metzala. Uh, we'll see that he's he's got a kind of a decent enough, high enough pass percentage. He's getting away more shots on target. He's getting away more key passes per 90 which is probably him having that increased risk on the player instructions um which is contributing to more assists so you know in terms of all these he's not he's got a lot of goal outputs but you would expect those key passes and assists and, and uh, to be the, the higher ones per 90 um he's performing above the advanced playmaker within brazilian Serie A. so that in a nutshell is lucas lorenzo it's me covering the role of the Metzala in a little bit more detail. Um, as with any of my videos, drop a like. Uh, please, please, please comment because it feeds a YouTube algorithm. But uh, yeah, no, I hope you've um, hope you've enjoyed this one. Like I said, it's something that I've done. It's a little bit different from from the rest, but uh, it's one which I've thoroughly enjoyed drilling down onto. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for thanks for watching. Peace.